the white shirt came. Okay, that's all I'm going to say about my clothes today. Uh, hi, by Rachel Tiffany here. I feel like I have a lot of things I want to talk about today, so I've learned that I've got to keep it under 10 minutes, and I'm going to try to do so. Um, I just want to say, for reasons that I will not explain, but I just have to say to people that I love James Earl Jones. Thank you. Okay. Um, I also want to say thanks for so many great comments and um, people who've answered the Q&A. I'm really surprised that people seem to really like that. I, you know, had been asked to do it and kept saying I would and sort of did it because I promised I would that day and didn't really think it turned out that interesting. But I'm very excited that people liked it. And I've gotten no video responses yet, but I'm, I've been promised to. And some people have emailed me their responses, so I'm going to see if I can maybe cut and paste them into comments, because I think that the answers are pretty interesting. So I'm glad that that uh, was fun for people. And, um, geez, where to begin with the heavier stuff? Um... Well, I guess I'm going to begin with, um, biracial girl 1977 commented that I don't look black to her, I look Hispanic, and she would just assume that I'm Hispanic, though she understands that Hispanic is not a race, it's, uh, you know, I guess Spanish-speaking people. Um, and I, in New York City, I get all the time, um, what are you, where, where are you from? And I say Michigan. Maybe that's kind of being a smart ass, but um, I I think people generally think I'm from the Dominican Republic or that I'm Puerto Rican, um, Ethiopian, and Indian sometimes. But um, in Michigan, where I grew up, and when I lived there, there was not a large Hispanic community. I don't know that if there is or is not um, now. But it just sort of seemed like you were either black or white. There was not much, you know, wiggle room or maybe you could be this. So nobody ever asked me, really, what I was until I moved to New York. And I certainly am not offended by an assumption just from someone on the street that I may be Dominican or Hispanic. It's just not an insult, but... I do have a problem when someone has known me for a while, casually, but still, you know, this happens to me kind of frequently, I guess, in the last few years. Um, and then it comes out that they have assumed that I was Hispanic. And I just think in having conversations with me, I'm stunned that anyone would assume that I'm anything other than American whatever that means. So, that's all I have to say about that. I mean, I guess there's a little story that goes along with it, is that this guy that worked in a store close to where I was working was telling me how his co-worker had to run out for fried chicken, and those black people, they really love fried chicken, and he just said it like five times. And every time he said that, I said, well, I don't. As in, like, I must be an exception to your rule, or I'm disproving your theory, so please stop saying that. And so finally, I guess, he listened to what I said, and he said, oh, you're black? I didn't, you know, I thought you were Hispanic. So, you know, I had spent probably a few hours total of my life talking to this guy about where I was from. You know, it was like, you're not even listening. You've heard nothing I've said. Like, why have I even spoken to you? And I wonder how often that happens, and that's just kind of irritating to me. Um, what else? What else? I also wanted to say, because I just, I haven't, like, included this anywhere, and, you know, I, I don't want people to think that I was this black girl that went to white schools and was really lonely all the time. I had lots of friends. Uh, God, just so many great friends 
and their families were fantastic and I spent lots of time and always felt welcome and included in any sense of otherness I think that I felt in those situations and there was some but I think it was almost self-inflicted in a way um, not saying that I didn't encounter one racist or prejudiced person or anything but I just you know, I think being me and sort of getting mixed messages and not knowing where I fit in and feeling so different, yet at the same time knowing that I, in this white situation, I'm just as white as I am anything else that people are saying that makes me seem different. Like, all these thoughts and feelings that I could have just been having would account for any sense of otherness that I felt in my relationships with my friends in groups of people where I was the only person of color. Um, but I just, I just wanted to make it clear that I had fantastic friends and good experiences in high school and middle school and elementary school. Um, and I just think that's important to say because I don't think I've made that clear and I've sort of dwelt on maybe things that were negative. I don't know. I'm trying not to be negative. But, um, and I wanted to share a story about that. I had a friend in high school whose mom, for reasons that don't really matter, but it was a very positive thing, she called me the black goddess. And this was probably my senior year of high school. I'm sure it was, actually. Not probably. And that was, I think, like, the first time that, A, any white person acknowledged my blackness aloud. Because I think people may have been afraid of my sensitivity to it or didn't want to offend me or me think that they thought it was an issue. So that was kind of refreshing to be like, it's not so taboo that you can't say that I'm black. Um, especially at this time when I would have, if anyone asked me what I was, I would have identified as black and really didn't have a concept of a biracial identity. But also, it was really refreshing because it was like, it was so positive and it was so loving and nice. And it was like, yes, <laughs> there is nothing wrong with being black. It is a lovely and nice thing. And I think that was like, the first time that anyone made me feel that way. I feel like I got so many messages that it's kind of too bad that you're half black or it, it, it's kind of or too bad that you're half white but you know just that it was a big deal to be black because somehow it was a negative thing that I wasn't going to be able to get away from. And Barbara Dara, I would thank you to my dying day for giving me that. And I think of it often, and I love you for it, and thank you. Um, my time is almost up. And I, I also wanted to say, sort of on that same note, people have been saying, you know, the one drop rule doesn't really exist, or that thought is held more in the black community, and what is that about? And... You know, I essentially think it comes down to people feeling oppressed and if that's the experience that they are having, then I, they want me to have to have it too. <laughs> and I don't get, you know, to pass just because I'm half white and because any biracial person is half white that came up in the comments. I think it was on um, video 4.75. Um, and that's just sort of my theory on that. It's kind of like misery loves company. And I'm certainly not making a generalization that all black people are miserable and think that I should be too. At all. But I do get that I just think that that's sort of an underlying thing with that sort of one drop rule being held on to in the black community and it would be really nice 
after that was let go. So, slowly but surely, people. Slowly but surely.